Today with PKR, we are going to talk about storage devices. Back in the 70s, it was the tapes, the hard disks, and the floppies. But the memory was very sh <coughs> Sorry. Mm. Uh, we can simply talk about the fact that back then you basically had just a little bit of RAM and maybe some decent uh, floppies, you know, in the early 80s. There was really nothing else. And users, we seem to be pretty happy. Welcome back. This is the section in which PKR brings us the latest technologies. Hello, PKR, and welcome to the computer show. Welcome back. This is the section in which PKR brings us the latest technologies. Hello, PKR, and welcome to the computer show. Hi, everyone. Today with PKR, we'll talk about storage devices. Because back in the 70s and 80s, we just had computers with a little bit of RAM. <coughs> Sorry. Going back to the. Welcome back. This is the section in which PKR brings us the latest technologies. Hello, PKR, and welcome to the computer show. Hi, everyone. Today, with our expert PKR, we'll talk about storage devices. Because back in 70s and 80s, we were happy with a computer with two megabits of RAM and a bit of a tape or a floppy. But now, people are talking about gigabytes of memory. So PKR, tell us, what is this explosion about uh, storage devices? People talk about gigabytes. They're no more happy with megabytes. I think the basic thing that's happened is that the files have gotten bigger, the applications have gotten bigger. Today, kids buy games on CD-ROMs which span you know, five, six CD-ROMs. So kids use games, a single game which takes up you know, six gigabytes of storage space. So all through, every application is demanding bigger and bigger files. So you have to transfer one of these files somewhere, or you want to play a bit of video, you want to play a bit of audio, whatever you do, each of these files is actually in many megabytes and maybe in gigabytes. But wasn't in the 80s the memory so expensive that nobody would have thought of a game of uh, gigabytes of memory? That's true. Both the memory itself and the storage space was very expensive. So you actually had to, I, I remember working with computers with, you know, two kilobytes of RAM. And we did pretty interesting things with those computers. Today, because you have 64 KB of RAM, you know, or 64 megabytes of RAM, you've got gigabytes of storage space, you're able to do more. But yes, the demand from these applications is also growing larger and larger. And we are never happy with the few gigabytes of storage space that we have on our computer. So let's uh, see, what are the different kind of storage devices which are popular today? For example, has the hard disk, what has been the progression in hard disk? The hard disk remains the core of the PC storage. Now the hard disk is a nice closed sealed unit which looks something like this. It's basically not changed very much except that they've become smaller, more compact, there's more storage space. In fact, this is a two gigabyte disk drive which is pretty much the lowest capacity disk drive anybody in the world makes anywhere on this planet today. So if you buy a disk drive today, it's going to be two gigabytes or more. If you buy anything older, well, it's very old stock. So this remains the basis of all PCs. And in fact, whatever else is happening to storage, most files on the PC, most working, whether it's on a network or anything, ultimately those files are stored on hard disks like this. Mm -hmm. uh, for file transfer, the floppy remains, the, you know, the one or two megabyte floppy remains the basic mode of transfer. But that again is changing rapidly because these hard disks, for instance, have become so big. One of the reasons is the files have become so big. Now what happens when you want to transfer a 20 megabyte or 30 megabyte file? You have to use something else. You can't use 20 floppies because you have to break up that file. So that's when you use other devices. For instance, there are devices like this which are essentially floppies. They're also three and a half inch floppies, but they store 100 megabytes. Okay. Similarly, there's another product which stores 120 megabytes, and it goes into a drive just like this, which could be an external drive, or it could be a drive which fits inside your PC. Uh, zip disks like this, LS120 diskettes, they're simple floppies, three and a half inch floppies, storing 100 or more megabytes of data. So these are at the core of uh, what a PC user would tend to use today. Okay. Hard disks of capacities from two gigabytes to somewhere around nine or 10 gigabytes. And what would they cost like the hard disk of two megabits? Uh, two gigabyte hard Sorry. disk is going to be uh, the cheapest hard disk that you can really buy, which is maybe six or six and a half thousand rupees. You can't buy anything either cheaper or smaller than that today. 
floppies, well the standard floppy disk drives start today at 2 or 3000, but a disk drive of this type which will store 100 megabytes could land up costing about 7 or 7500. These prices are coming down. And in terms of sheer storage cost and capacity, these are obviously much, much cheaper than the floppies today because per megabyte of storage space, these work out much cheaper. But isn't floppies out of fashion? I mean, uh, people talk about CDs now, multimedia, everything on CDs. So well, you still have to use something to, uh, floppies are very flexible in the sense that you can easily copy stuff onto them and then transfer those things to another person. But yeah, you're right that the CD, because it has become the very basic way of distributing software, it also seems to be the most natural way to give others soft when you want to, for instance, copy a file to somebody else. Now, for instance, if you buy any software today, very likely it's going to come out on a CD, something like this. So CDs like this, which store about 600 megabytes or 700 megabytes of data, they're given free with magazines like this CD. Uh, they are the basic mode of distributing software. Therefore, the next natural step is CDs like this on which you can write. So those are the recordable CDs. CDs of this nature, therefore, are becoming actually rather popular for file transfer, definitely for archival. Because once, about six months ago, they used to cost, you know, something like 700 rupees or 600 rupees. Today, these cost about 100 rupees each. So you can actually use them for file transfer. A dramatic fall in prices. Dramatic fall in prices. So if you want to store, if you want to back up 200 megabytes of data, you want to send a 100 MB file to a friend, this is the cheapest way to do but it. But then what about the device which records? Uh, how much that cost to know? Uh, uh, a storage device which will record, basically a CD recorder drive, is going to cost anywhere from 20,000 rupees upward. And today, in fact, they're becoming very fast, very efficient, and fairly affordable. So a 25,000 rupee drive could use a disk like this, could read a CD-ROM, and you can use it with your computer. You can carry it around because it's an external drive. And it's really a very effective way to store data and very, very cheap. It works out maybe 20 times cheaper than storing on floppies. Okay. But now when we have hard disks which are into gigabytes, we have floppies into 100 megabytes plus, we have uh, CD-ROMs which are 600 megabytes plus. Uh, what is happening to RAM? I mean, is there also the capacity increasing uh, quite dramatically? I think what's happening there is that RAM, of course, has really exploded in terms of its capacity change, in terms of the price. So today, the, the smallest modules which are made are 32 megabytes. But on the other hand, people, you know, there used to be a lot of predictions about things like that RAM is going to overtake all these things. And instead, once upon a time, Cray supercomputer, you know, they're the ones who make the supercomputer which is sitting in Mossam Bhavan. Uh, that company used to make these computers. They came out with a hard disk drive, which was actually not a hard disk drive. It was a block of 100 megabytes of RAM. So they called it a solid state hard disk and said, this is the way of the future. But the fact of life is that hard disks have also progressed very, very rapidly in terms of cost, in terms of performance capacity. So hard disks have gone into gigabytes. RAM has just about hit the hundreds of megabytes level. So while RAM is increasing very rapidly in cost and price performance, the fact is that today each of these storage technologies has its own place. So we have now the RAM going from 2K to 64 or 100 megabits. Absolutely. But we have a hard disk going into gigabytes. That's what Absolutely. Now what about the memory prices in general, RAM prices? Have they also come down very dramatically? Yes, they have, and that's been one of the major factors for the explosion in applications. Uh, RAM prices which have, you know, for instance, uh, you would typically buy a PC with 8 megabytes or 16 megabytes of RAM. Today, it does not make sense to buy a PC with less than 32 megabytes. Now, 32 megabytes, 64 megabytes, these are becoming so affordable because the RAM has dropped to something like three or 400 rupees per megabyte. And this used to be about 2,000 or 2,500 rupees per megabyte a year ago. And that's made a very major difference to applications which are very demanding of memory. And those applications have now become popular because the common person, you and me, when we buy a computer, we are now able to buy computers with that kind of memory. So what do you think a home computer, somebody using computers at home, uh, what kind of uh, memory storage devices we should have? I mean, whether what kind of hard disk capacity? On an average, what should one be looking for? Today, you cannot so buy RAM, a computer. So RAM, you said, is 32 megabits. Uh, Absolute that's a, minimum, that's the yes. minimum one should that's have. the minimum. If you're going to do a lot of graphic stuff, you could look at 64 megabytes. And like I said, it doesn't really cost too much more. Uh, you would have a hard disk, and today you cannot buy less than two gigabytes. If you buy a one gigabyte hard disk, you might get a very old hard disk which is there. So you should really buy a two gigabyte or larger hard disk drive. You must have a CD-ROM drive to play these CD-ROM kind of things. 
Now, if you are a designer or if you are a person who needs to store a lot of stuff on very, very high capacity storage devices, you would need either a device which can write to disks like this, CDRs, or you might need a device which can write to disks like this, which are rewritable disks, which look exactly like this, except that you can record on them again and again. You can erase them and re-record on them. So if you buy a device like this, that would cost you about 25 or 30,000 rupees. Okay. So depending on your application, you might want to buy either a zip drive or a LS120 kind of disk drive, which will store 100 MB floppies, or you might want to go straight away for a CD recordable device. But primarily, you need a hard disk, you need a CD-ROM drive, you need some kind of a floppy drive, and you need about 32 to 64 megabytes of RAM. But in olden days, we had the tapes, you know. What happened to them? I mean, have, they, have you seen some transformation there? Well, again, uh, I think every expert under the sun has predicted the death of the tape for so many decades. And what happens with the tape, again, is the same story. The tape keeps on progressing in its price, performance, and cost. Today, as 10 years ago and as it was 20 years ago, the tape remains the cheapest form of very, very high capacity backup. To give you an example, tapes of this type, which are used primarily for backup and not for online storage, this is a five gigabyte tape. Okay, this stores five gigabytes of data. Now that's an awful lot of storage. I mean, that will store something like maybe uh, six or seven million pages of information. Uh, similarly, tapes of this type, this can actually store about 24 gigabytes of data and you on this three of tape. them there. And I have actually six of them there. Oh, the, all so the this other whole side. thing on the other side. Mm -hmm. So this whole block stores 120 gigabytes of data. And that's used to back up an entire network of computers, an entire network of servers. So as you can see, tapes have really progressed. If this is a two gigabyte hard disk, this is a six gigabyte tape, and this block is 120 gigabytes. So, so smaller the beautiful terrific. and smaller the powerful. Absolutely, and they're very cheap. So they're really a cheap and effective way to store but data. But they still have linear access. That's right. So therefore, it's not something you can quickly pick out a video clip or a file out of. But they're terrific for backing up your entire server overnight or your entire hard disk overnight or simply transferring your whole hard disk to some other computer somewhere. You know, just imagine you can transfer a whole server or 10 PCs worth of data and mail it to somebody in Europe or wherever, and you know, he can back it out and restore it again. Lovely, but what do you think of future? Uh, what direction are we going in storage devices? Fundamentally, uh, storage devices will go on rapidly increasing in the capacity. For example, CD-ROM drives, which are, you know, which sounded like they're such a high capacity device, 600 megabytes. Today, they're woefully inadequate because games come into, into five, six, seven GB sizes, gigabyte sizes. So therefore, you have the DVD-ROM drive, which is going to stabilize at about 17 gigabytes for a single disk like this. Uh, we will find that around that level for the current technology of DVD will stabilize there, and you will find that, again, the price will begin to plateau off. Today, a disk like this costs about 30 rupees or 35 rupees to make. DVDs still are about five or six times that price. So we will see fundamentally the same changes, a sudden jump in the technology, then a flattening of the technology while the price catches up, and then again another jump. And I think we will find that all these storage technologies, the hard disk, the optical drive, and RAM as we know it, and magnetic storage, they will all continue in their various directions and will continue to gain in price performance.